Good morning. You know, I've always kind of admired Oprah Winfrey. I don't watch her show, but I admire the way she can connect with her audience. And one of the things she does that really impresses me is the way she can draw her audience in and kind of make them believers. And she does this often by giving them free things. If you saw the Jon Stewart Daily Show last week, she popped in and gave his whole audience a free trip to his big rally to restore sanity this weekend. And how she does that is to tell her audience to look under their chair and get a voucher for a free this or a free that. And I thought today that I could show up and do the same thing and have you each look under your chair and find maybe a hundred dollar bill. And so I was going to walk out here and say, look under your chair and grab that hundred bucks. And that's when my wife nudged me and said, Sean, you're talking about being paperless. You can't give them paper as a prize. And so I just want you to know that it's the thought that counts, all right? <laughs> I started going paperless about seven years ago, and I teach some special ed courses and some educational technology courses and even some ed foundation courses. And I got to this point where I don't have a good filing system, so I would have piles of papers, and some papers were graded, some were partially graded, my dog would eat other piles. I mean, I, I hit all those uh, kind of barriers that you have with paper. And so I decided to shift to paperless teaching um, seven years ago, and I haven't looked back. And in the early days, it wasn't easy, because I would have students that would do stuff with old Claris works on a Mac, and I couldn't open the file, or whatever file type they used. And then Google came along with Google Docs, and I shifted to using Google Docs many years ago and had my students create a Google account, and we've gotten rid of all the file compatibility issues since then. And now every student at Grand Valley has a Google Docs account, and so it's very easy to use with your students. Anybody in the world can get a Google Doc account for free. Um, but I want to provide a little justification for why you should consider going paperless, and I'm not going to read anything that's up there, um, but I will tell you that in the business world, the average document is copied about 19 times. The typical U.S. household sends or receives 26 bills, statements, or checks per year, or per month. And so if we could reduce by going to paperless billing and paperless e-banking, you know, e we could have a greenhouse reduction equivalent to about 350,000 cars being taken off the road each year. I mean, that's a huge impact we can make for a very little small change. I want to also address the naysayers. And there are people who would say, well, we shouldn't think about going paperless. Instead, we should think about going computerless, because our computers and devices are always on, and they're using a lot of electricity, and that has a bigger impact on the environment. And I would concede the point that um, our devices do use a lot of electricity, and I hope the powers that be come up with cleaner forms of energy and sustainable forms of energy. I'm all for that. But I think the paper copies that we make are often redundant because we already have the digital copies. More often than not, we're taking a digital copy and printing it. And so you had the copy on your computer. Uh, you either received it in an email, you can see what that does for the average office, um, or you created the file originally, or it was a web page you wanted. Um, regardless, it was on your computer to begin with. And so if it's on your computer, then that means that you're likely not trusting the technology, and so you want to get a paper copy of it. Um, and I'm here to tell you that the, actually the paper copies are less safe than the digital copies, and I'll come back to that. But also, by shifting to a paperless model, you reduce clutter. And so if you don't have clutter like me, perhaps you file stuff in file cabinets. And the average business will need another file cabinet when that one fills, and then another file cabinet when that one fills. And so if we can shift to a paperless model, then you reduce all of that extra space. Uh, let's see. Most paper we produce... All right, people don't trust technology, and I want to come back to that because when you're creating documents, I always tell my students, save early and save often. And by the time you get ready to print, that means you've completed the document, and that's when you should instead think about backing up. My computer has an external hard drive that backs up hourly, everything I do on my computer, every time. And so I'm never going to lose more than a minute's worth of work. But when I have important files, I'll also upload those into Google Docs. And you can see how Google Docs looks. It looks very much like Microsoft Word for the... Uh, the word processor. They also have a PowerPoint version and an Excel uh, uh, version, but it looks very similar. But if you can back up into Google Docs and your house burns down, 
I can assure you the paper copies are going to burn first. And then maybe the digital copy will also be lost, but the copy in Google Docs will not be lost. It's actually a safer model to get into digital than to go with paper. How do you go paperless at work? Well, at first it's a mentality. You have to decide to do it. And I decided to use Google Docs. Maybe that's the tool that works for you. I would love to see schools try to go more paperless. Obviously, kids are going to still have to handwrite and work on that kind of stuff. But schools could save a lot of money. That for, uh, they use Microsoft Word right now. If they went to open source solutions or Google Docs that's free, they could save millions of dollars across the United States per year by going uh, to these different tools. Read ebooks. You know, Amazon announced yesterday that their ebooks, their Kindle store, is now outselling their paper books, so the hardback and the paperback books, two to one. That's incredible that people are thinking that now they can read off of these little devices. I mean, my, this is a sign of how good the device screens are going to be. It's incredible how good they look. And I know that people will say, I can't read off of the of a computer screen, for example, but the Kindles and the iPads, the screens are really getting readable. And the satisfaction surveys are very close to books now. And so you can get those. In fact, the, the iPad will read the Kindle books. And so those numbers that they have are very similar. Uh, uh, actually, the iPad and the Kindle both use the Kindle books. And so they're outselling two to one. If we can do that with books, we can do it in other parts of our lives as well. Um, how do you go paperless in your life? Well, for one, you can do like I said earlier and shift to paperless banking. You can shift to paperless bills. But you also get a lot of junk mail. And so if you go through your junk mail and start to examine the kind of stuff you get over and over, you can contact those companies and tell them, I don't want to receive your junk mail anymore. If you know how to do a Google search, you can search for how do I reduce my junk mail. And there's lots of tips for doing that. One of the things you get a lot of is credit card offers. And you can make a single toll-free call or go to a website and get all of those credit card offers to stop with one call. And so I would encourage you to do that. You can also, my kids will repeat this mantra all the time, reduce, reuse, recycle. And so when we go shopping, we always try and recycle. But even me, I have trouble going completely paperless. And there are things that I can't do. For example, I'm still looking for a sustainable, paperless model for going to the bathroom. And on that note, I will turn it back over to Craig. And thank you.